What's going on everybody? It's Brian for thetechmob.net and today I'll be bringing you my review of the Sylvania Pro HD DV6000G pocket video camera. Now this little camera is capable of recording 720p video which is 1280 by 720 and it's also capable of taking 5 megapixel photos. So I've already done an unboxing of this camera. If you'd like to see that, you could go ahead and click on the video link down below in the description. I'm not going to go over the contents of the box again. Now this camera does come in multiple colors, red, blue, purple, pink, and black. I have the red one here. And I picked this camera up for about 25 bucks from onesaleaday.com. They had a nice little sale for this camera, so I decided to pick it up for review purposes. But I do believe that you can find this for about 40 to 50 bucks on many websites around the web. So first I'm going to give you an overview of the camera. But first I will say that this thing is a fingerprint magnet. As you can tell, there's fingerprints all over the oh, oh. So as you can tell, there's fingerprints all over the place because it is made of a shiny, glossy plastic material. So on this side of the camera, we do have our lens and it is capable of having eight times optical zoom. Here's some lens information here. Now here is the speaker. Here is a little microphone port. Here is a LED light which will shine red whenever you are charging the camera because this does have a rechargeable battery. The battery is 800 milliamp hours. So in terms of battery life I've been able to get about an hour and a half of continuous video recording with this camera. I basically just started a 720p video recording and then just sort of monitored when the camera would shut itself off and it did so out of, after about an hour and a half of the video recording. The SD card was not full yet but the battery itself died so it shut itself off. On this side of the camera we do have the SD card slot. Fortunately this camera does come equipped with a 4 gigabyte class 2 PNY SDHC card. That just slides in right there and it stays in place. Here is our power button, so let's go ahead and push that. Now on this side, you can see that we have a two inch LCD display. Not too sure of the resolution, but it's not that high. Um, here we can see some of our buttons. Mode will allow us to change between our video recording mode and our photo taking mode. This button will bring up the menu. Everything here is pretty self-explanatory. I'm not gonna go through one, each of these. Here we have a playback menu button which will play back any videos or photos that you have currently on your device. The up and down buttons will allow you to zoom in or zoom out either when you're in photo mode or video mode and this will allow you to change the quality of your videos or your photos. So for videos we can switch between 720p and VGA which is 640 by 480 For photos we can switch between 5 megapixels, 1 megapixel, and three megapixels. So on this side of the camera, we do have a mini HDMI port. I believe it's a mini HDMI port. I think my terminology in terms of cables is still not that great, but you are able to connect, connect this camera to your HD TV so you can view your photos and videos. Here we have a regular AV out, which allows you to use the included composite video cable to watch videos and photos on your TV. Here we have a little USB thing and this will allow you to pop out the USB port. Now you can plug this camera directly into your computer or a USB wall charger if you'd like to just charge the camera. Or you could use the included USB extension cable to plug this into whatever device you'd like. Now on the bottom of the camera we do have a little lanyard area here so you can just slide in a lanyard and you can just carry it around on the string. And here we have a tripod mount. And that is pretty much everything of the overview of the camera itself. Now the menu system for the camera is very easy to use. Uh, as you can see here there's not a whole lot of buttons, not a whole lot of options to go through which is good in my opinion. Now. In terms of video quality, the video quality is not that good. I have uploaded HD, 720p, and VGA video samples from this camera directly. I didn't edit them in any way. And the, the video quality is okay. There's no macro mode on this camera, so you're not able to get close-up shots of your subject. But overall, the video quality is decent. If I have to give it a rating on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the best, I would probably give it about 6. 
The video quality is better than nothing, but there's not that much crispness. There is a good bit of pixelation in your video if there's lots of movement, so the bitrate is not that good. Uh, in terms of audio, um, it just seems pretty low as well. There, there's a lot of wind noise if it's windy outside, and then there's going to be a lot of wind noise. And even if I'm holding the camera, let's say, um, a good four feet away from my mouth, and when I start talking, I won't even start talking that loud and the audio will get distorted. Um, so back to video quality real quick. It just seems like that the colors aren't as accurate as they could be. Um, there is sort of the jello effect, which is expected on small cameras like this. In terms of photos, it's pretty much the same thing. Just imagine instead of having a moving pictures through your frames, you know, a video, it would just take one still photo and, you know, just save that as a JPEG file. So I will have the photo, the, uh, the photo samples in my written review, which is over at thetechmob.net. I'll put a link to that down below in the description. So video and photo quality with this camera are not that great, but I'm not expecting them to be either. Uh, this is a sort of a low-end budget camera. It's made for you know little emergencies, something if you want to keep in your car, if you have a car accident, or if you see something weird happen, you could just take this out real quick and start recording videos or start taking photos. But the thing is, is that most people have cell phones, you know, smartphones, either by either an Android phone or an iPhone. And chances are that if you have a recent phone, then the camera quality will be better than this. So the iPhone 4's video quality is definitely better than this. Uh, even the iPad 2's video quality is better than this, I think. So if you already have a smartphone, then chances are that your camera on it uh, as long as the phone is recent, will be better than this. But this is a nice little camera. It's less than 50 bucks on most websites. I picked this up for 25 bucks once again from onesaleaday.com and pretty much just picked this up for review purposes. Uh, it's not that bad of a camera. It's good for little things, emergencies. If you if if you if you're going into if you're doing adventurous stuff like if you're going outside with a friend and you're doing sort of crazy things and you don't want to risk your phone getting damaged then you could just you could just pick this up and use this instead uh it is fairly compact it's a bit on the thick side of things but it's not too bad it's a little over an inch thick i believe but that's pretty much it. So that was my review of the Sylvania Pro HD DV6000G Pocket Video Camera. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions about this or anything else, you can leave them down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you all very soon.